Did you know that the temperature of a lightning bolt can exceed 30,000 degrees Celsius, which is six times the surface temperature of the sun and most other stars too? And the speed at which the bolt goes through the Earth's atmosphere often exceeds 50 to 55,000 kilometers per hour. About 75% of all lightning stays in the atmosphere, never reaching the surface of the Earth. They often strike above in the clouds rather than the ground. On average, there are about 1.5 billion lightning strikes in the atmosphere of our planet every year. It is possible to count lightnings with the help of orbiting satellites. According to statistics, the average length of a bolt is about 9.5 kilometers. That's more than the height of Everest, the highest place on Earth above sea level. Contrary to the popular saying, lightning often strikes the same place twice, or even more. The bolt always follows the path of least resistance. The energy contained in one average lightning strike would be enough to power a metropolis of 10 million people for an entire year. Despite the fact that thunderstorms and lightning strikes happen over water more often than over land, the discharges hit water about five times less often than they hit the ground or various objects. But there are facts and cases which have become known to us only recently. Recently, scientists have been able to record and study a number of unusual, previously unknown phenomena associated with lightnings. And that's what we're going to tell you about today. Lightning bolts we did not know about. July 1989. A 73-year-old NASA veteran, John Randolph Winkler, noticed strange, huge flashes from a distant thunderstorm. Luckily, he was an expert on atmospheric light phenomena, so he realized that nothing like it has been recorded in the history of observation. After he captured the thunderstorm on his old speed camera and studied the results, the scientist realized that he made an interesting discovery. Later, these flashes were called sprites after the mystical spirits in William Shakespeare's comedy, A Midsummer Night's Dream. The discovery of the sprites opened a new page on the previously unknown before cluster of natural phenomena. The scientific world didn't know about sprites until the 21st century. What are sprites? These are large-scale electric discharges that occur high above thunderstorm clouds, but very high, 50 to 90 kilometers above the ground in the mesosphere. These are usually triggered by the discharges of positive lightning between an underlying thundercloud and the ground. How are they different from ordinary lightning? In almost everything. They are huge, dozens of miles. They are colored in evil red. They have weird shapes. If you see them for the first time, you would be mesmerized if you are too impressionable. Just think, these giant flashes have parts like head, hair, and even tendrils. And this is not folklore. These terms are used by scientists in an attempt to classify sprites and the varied range of visual shapes. The brightest and most visible part of the sprite is the head. Most often, it is located at altitudes on average 66 to 74 kilometers and has a bright red color. Above the head often, but not always, it is possible to see thin, elongated formations. These are the hairs of the sprite. They are dark red in color, separated from the head by a dark band and reach heights of about 90 kilometers. The head is almost always surrounded by a luminous halo. This is the halo of the sprite. 
Its diameter can be about 50 kilometers and a thickness of 10 kilometers. The halo appears over the area where the sprite appears about one millisecond before it, and there is the same elusive moment, about one millisecond. Attached below the head of the sprite are usually its tendrils, fibrous formations located below the level of 66 kilometers. The tendrils have a dark red color in the upper part, while in the lower part, they often acquire a purple hue. The total vertical length of the sprites reaches an average of 65 kilometers, while the horizontal length is a couple of tens of kilometers. Where do they come from? Oddly enough, sprites are an epic extension of the most ordinary lightning, albeit very powerful. And it should be lightning striking from the cloud into the ground, not the other way around. Sprites rarely occur by one. They often come in pairs or threes. The duration of a sprite flash is about 70 milliseconds on average. And during this elusive instant, a powerful energy is released from 0.2 to 2.5 megawatts. Recent research shows that sprites are, in fact, groups of small ionization spheres with diameters as small as 10 to 100 meters. These spheres travel downward at a tremendous speed of about 0.1 the speed of light. Such a crazy speed for charge propagation is impossible for ordinary lightning. Their limit is 1,000 kilometers per second. But in the rarefied ionosphere, the charge propagates much faster. That's why sprites are so fast and elusive. However, when it comes to speed, they lag behind amazing types of lightning bolts, elves. Like sprites, elves got the name because of Shakespeare. However, it is also an acronym for emission of light and very low frequency perturbations from electromagnetic pulse sources. These are the shortest lived, almost ephemeral lightning phenomena in the upper atmosphere. Only modern imaging techniques allow us to see this stunning sight. Elves are giant diverging red-purple rings. They also appear above the thunderstorm system, even higher than the sprites, 80 to 100 kilometers. They look like this. A glow arises at a certain point. It expands rapidly in the form of a ring, reaches 300 to 400 kilometers in diameter, and dies out. The whole process takes less than a millisecond. As in the case of sprites, the impetus for the emergence of the elf is the same powerful lightning beating out of the cloud into the ground. The trunk of the lightning becomes a natural transmitting antenna from which a powerful spherical electromagnetic wave of very low frequency starts at the speed of light. In 300 microseconds, it reaches a height of about 100 kilometers. There, the wave excites the red-violet glow of nitrogen molecules. The farther the wave goes, the wider the ring becomes until it fades away from the source. Elves are not given much attention by science in terms of study. Their nature is quite clear and hardly controversial. Unfortunately, they certainly can't be seen with the naked eye, unlike sprites. What a pity. But we have a chance to observe with our own eyes even more elusive mysterious and rare electrical phenomena in the upper atmosphere. These are jets. A jet looks like a narrow, inverted blue cone, starting from the upper edge of a thunderstorm cloud, sometimes as high as 40 kilometers. The velocity of blue jets is from 10 to 100 kilometers per second. At 
heights where the jets start, the pressure is still relatively high. So they are blue. This is the glow of nitrogen molecules in a dense atmosphere. This is how almost all ordinary lightning, wire discharges, and even high temperature flames glow. In addition to the usual jets from the upper edge of the cloud, the so-called blue starters sometimes shoot upwards. They do not rise above 30 kilometers. Why this is happening is not clear yet. Some scientists believe they are simply the discharge of ordinary lightning, which expands as it enters a low pressure region. Others consider them underdeveloped jets. The strangest thing is that the appearance of jets is not always associated with visible lightning discharges. Scientists are still racking their brains on this question. The most interesting type of blue jets are giant jets. Starting not very far from the Earth's surface, they reach a height of 90 kilometers. Giant jets are very interesting to scientists because these discharges make an entire journey from the troposphere to the distant ionosphere. Giant jets are as rare as they are great. They have been recorded in just over a dozen instances. At the same time, they live even a fraction of a second, but longer than normal blue jets. Because of the extreme rarity and elusiveness of giant jets, there is only scarce scientific data. Last but not least, let's go down closer to the ground. After all, sometimes a thunderstorm creates something that would easily give way to sprites, elves, and jets combined in terms of amazing and mysterious. We're talking about fireballs. You may say, why are they so special? There are many eyewitness accounts from ancient times. All accounts give the same picture describing a lightning ball, something round and bright. It appears out of nowhere. It can fly into a house. It moves along a strange trajectory with a crackling sound. It can explode, causing trouble or it can fly away quietly, leaving eyewitnesses trembling with horror. When you see it, you might want to say, it's alive! Everybody knows that fireballs exist, don't they? Really? In fact, it is an elusive phenomenon, and even in the scientific community, there are skeptics who do not believe in its existence at all. In 2010, Austrian scientists Joseph Peer and Alexander Kendall of the University of Innsbruck presented an interesting scientific theory. According to them, the numerous evidences of globular lightning are nothing more than phosphenes, i.e visual sensations in the eye. Their calculations show that the magnetic fields of certain lightning with repetitive discharges induce electric fields in the neurons of the visual cortex, which can appear to humans as ball lightning. Let me repeat once again. Serious and recognized scientists say and prove that ball lightnings do not exist and they are the products of human imagination. But we are not in a hurry to be disappointed. On July 23, 2012, Chinese scientists studied ordinary lightning on the plateau with spectrometers. That day, they were very lucky. A real ball lightning came into the field of view of their equipment they managed to record 1.64 seconds of glow and get its detailed spectra. The data showed that the ball lightning consists of ionized iron, silicon, and calcium. Those are none other than the basic constituents of soil. It means that most likely, ball lightning occurs when ordinary lightning strikes the ground. 
The very mechanism of formation of such a stable object still remains a mystery. It turns out that there are so many mysterious things about lightning. We turn our eyes to distant stars and planets in space, while many mysteries remain undiscovered and unexplained right under our noses.